Welcome to Prerna Ki Srot. As a blogger, I have been writing stories about people who really made difference in their lives, and they are my real life heroes. The guest who is gracing this episode of Prerna Ki Srot, I'm going to read something about her. I've been there. I have walked the walk of anxiety, depression, suicide attempts, but have also experienced the joy that comes in the morning. And today, I'm here to give you hope. From experiencing the anxiety stress of the kind that she experienced which was due to the abuse that she's gone through today she's instrumental through her support group to extend help to people who really need help in fighting with their journeys through the depression and stress and anxieties in their life to tell you a bit about Nancy Richardson uh, she's a blogger she has her own journals where she writes about her journey and she helps people she counsels them to provide them therapies that are required to fight with their own anxieties and depression and today she is with us on prerna ki srot as prerna ki srot which means the source of inspiration for all of us so let's get to meet uh, nancy yeah hi nancy welcome to prerna ki srot hi thank you for having me it's good to see you yeah it's good to see you too uh, so nancy tell us about yourself and your journey and this this group that you've started on mental wellbeing oh Wow. So my in my personal life and my personal history um I have a very long history of anxiety, depression, um a lot of like all the abuses, like all of them, the emotional, physical, sexual, um verbal, all of it. So that was um most of my life um up until probably my early 30s and um decided to go back to college um i was a single mom to very poor uh single mother um just struggling to survive and in my early 30s i decided to go to college um i pursued a career and i didn't really know what i wanted to do <laughs> but 10 years later um i ended up being a licensed professional counselor here in the united states um so i have been an addictions counselor for 17 years um and i also am a mental health therapist so um that's my professional career um which has then kind of led me into doing more uh for the community i think you know um i healed from my own depression and anxiety um and so i have such a huge passion for people who are suffering from mental illness um because mm -hmm. I understand the challenges because I've been there personally, but also mm -hmm. because um, what I have seen professionally. Um, so now just giving back to the community and being able to be free because I'm not working for anybody anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm just working for myself and to be able to be free and not have anybody tell me what to do. Now I can kind of give back and help people in whatever way feels amazing in my heart. So, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. So for me, yeah. you're the champion who, who really promotes about writing journals and mental well-being and health. So tell us about the weird journals that you have recently started uh, talking about on Insta. Oh my goodness. So um, with bullet journaling, it's kind of funny how I got started. Um, I was looking for a planner and, you know, like we all have planners that organize our day in our lives. And I found myself spending an awful lot of money on planners. And every time I would buy one, like there's all these pages in there that I don't use, or there's one that doesn't have stuff that I wanted. And so I encountered, I don't know how I came across bullet journaling, but um, I kind of overcame my fear of not knowing how to do it. And I just mm -hmm. bought one 
<laughs> and I have never used another journal or another planner since. Um, my first one started out as just an appointment book mm -hmm. and I used it for work. Um, but then I had some things kind of happen in my life and I needed to work on myself. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just do this however I want to do it and I'm going to make it work for me. And so I used a very large bullet journal for my first like self-improvement journal and I used it um, faithfully and I committed to it for a whole year and it transformed me and it transformed my life. I get yeah. so amazed by the, the doodle that you do. All of those, the little nuances that you, you do around those journals. You know, it when you rightly said that, you know, whatever that you buy, it's not customized based on your needs. But when you do it for yourself, you know what you need to work upon and how you need to, you want to capture it. And what needs to be there that motivates you to, to write that journal because journaling, usually people find it very boring after, you know, then the motivation goes down. So after a week, 10 days, people find it very difficult to continue with the habit correction, right? Uh, so um, there's this one thing that I also want to know. Uh, you mentioned about you providing therapy to people, the psychotherapies that you provide to people. So how did this journey from being, being part of the, the uh, being a victim of the abusers that you mentioned to now this journey that you've taken over, wherein you are a psychotherapist, you're helping people come out of it. You've created a support group for people and the work that you're doing currently is phenomenal. If you turn, you know, if you look back on your, the years that you've spent, today where you're standing, I think you are a winner, you're a champion, you're the hero and a real life source of inspiration for all of us. Uh, because a lot of us, irrespective of the community that we are from, irrespective of the societies that we come from, and the cultures that we are, we go through, women go through a lot of abuse in life. So, uh, you know, I would like to ask you this question on behalf of all women. Uh, how did you take this journey? And today, were you you sitting as a psychotherapist when you were helping people? How did this journey happen for you? What was the first step that you decided, I don't want to take any more. I would now make my own way forward. I was tired. I, I was really tired because um, I'm 51 now. Um, that decision for me happened when I was in my early 20s. Um, but I was really tired. I mean, there were a few moments when I was like, this is just enough. Um, when my daughter was two and we were homeless and I remember sitting in this like play covered playground like this playground equipment and it was raining outside and she was two and we didn't have money we didn't have food we didn't have a place to live I didn't have a car I didn't know what to do and here I was just looking at my child and I'm like, I, I'm tired. And I just remember looking at her and I cried and I said, you know, when I, I'm going to get out of this and when I do, I'm never going to put you through this again. Um, so there was that. Um, I think I always kind of knew that I was deserving and better. Um, I was deserving of people to care about me. Um, I was deserving of people to love me. Um, and I knew that the people that I was involved with didn't care about me. Um, but I was so stuck in survival mode all the time that I think I was just kind of yearning for something. And I, I don't know, I just was like, 
I'm just tired. I have to have more. I have to, this can't be my life. This just can't be my life. Um, but it took me until I was 33 years old to finally like go back to school. Um, I, the last time I think I was like in a domestic violence shelter and, um, my later twenties, um, and I think when I went to jail, cause I've been in jail a couple of times, um, being away from my child for four months. Um, and I'm like, I have to do something different. So, yeah. I, I totally can understand because the moment that you decided to bring the change, uh, you started working towards it. And that is wh what makes you uh, my role model, my source of inspiration, because not everybody has this courage to, to even to realize that I'm tired. A lot of us just, you know, we just be in the grind and some, at some point in time, we, I, I find it very difficult to say, but people start uh, associating themselves, staying in the grind as their uh, destiny that, you know, this is going to continue. There's no, re no reason why I should even come out of it because somewhere that also starts giving you a sort of satisfaction, a sort of comfort that, you know, I am going to be like this all the time. And you don't want to bring that change. Bringing that change requires a lot of inertia from within and you, it requires a lot of effort to be put in. So you come out of that situation. So um, I wanted to give you one tight hug here and to tell you that uh, what you did was beautiful because uh, of not just for yourself, but for the rest of us who you are now connecting with. Uh, so um, the people that you're now working and helping uh, that makes that that has made a lot of you know change in the life of the people that you're touching because you decided to bring the change in yourself for yourself for your kid and now you're helping so many others come out of it you know those are the things though that I did that changed my life my lifestyle but those things that I did didn't change me they only changed my, the way that I was living, my lifestyle. They provided food and shelter and comfort. Um, and then in my career, I got the satisfaction of helping other people. But what never happened was um, fixing broken me. Um the me that caused me to get into bad relationships or to be scared to walk away or um, afraid to stand up for myself or um, always needing things to be perfect and not realizing that, you know, deep down inside, there was this part of me that always said like, but Nancy, like, you're not good enough. You can't do this. Like, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. And so I really overcompensated a lot of that because of my career and my career gave me um, validation that I was somebody. And so I had attached who I was as a person to my career. When I got fired from my absolute dream job, the lights inside of me literally shut off. I didn't know who I was. I, I didn't know what I was going to do. Like, what am I going to do now? Um, like, I, I, I was uh, really not in a really good place. And, you know, I have a, a very deep foundation with in relationship with, you know, God. Um, and so I buried myself in him and uh, I just really um made a decision Nancy like you have to stop pretending that everything is okay um you have to accept that there you have to you have to fix you like there are broken parts of you Nancy like you have to find out 
where those places are and you have to be okay looking at it straight in the eyes and love yourself. You have to make your life about your inside, like loving who you are because loving other people wasn't enough for me. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's so beautifully placed when you said that uh, you have to start loving yourself the way that you are, because that thing itself is the beginning of loving everybody else around you. Uh, you can't love somebody else if you don't love yourself. And uh, as I always say that if you don't love yourself, who will? So I never understood what that meant. I, I grew up hearing that from all my friends, but I always said, but Nancy, you can't love somebody unless you love yourself. But I do love myself. I know who I am. I care about me. Well, it took me forever to realize what that really meant is that when we have, when we lack self-confidence, when we lack self-esteem, when we lack self-worth, when we lack self-awareness, when we lack self-acceptance, the way that we view the world is very different. We view the world through the lens of um, it's everybody else's fault. I'm not good enough. Um, you know, like I'm the victim and yes, I was a victim, but I didn't have to live that way. And when we view the world through those lenses, because of the things that have happened to us, um, we are always looking out, seeking validation from other people or our accomplishments. And that somehow those things are going to determine like our worth. And we have a tendency then to invite things into our lives that are unhealthy for us, whether it be people, drugs, food, unhealthy things. Like we invite those things into our life and we, our boundaries are not the greatest. And, and so learning to love yourself though, teaches you to what you're going to accept and allow in your life and what you're not going to. Um, it helps us guard our hearts. It helps us to, it's standing up and saying, you know what, like I, I'm worthy and I'm valuable. So, you know, like you can't have this because you are not treating me like the blue diamond that I am. And the thing is, is that when we lack those things, we're looking at it, we're forcing ourselves to try to love somebody, to try to convince them that we're good people or try to convince them that, oh, like I'm great. And fixing people or trying to fix you know, our partners or our friends, because somehow if we do that, then that means that, oh my gosh, like, yes, I'm a great person because look at all these great things that I did. So. Wow. Yes. So, um, so rightly said, we look for validation from people uh, so that they approve of us, of who we are. But the actual, uh, the meaning that you defined for me today, self-love is uh, setting your boundaries, even for yourself, to a great extent. Um, I would like to ask you about this, uh, this habit journaling that you're doing with a group of people, because that is what my, my biggest area of interest is. Well, uh, so, yeah, I have a collection of um, bullet journals of my own now. Um, because journaling is such a passion of mine. <laughs> um, and part of my journal company, it's not just about, okay, like here, I've got this product. I needed a way to help 
people and to reach people. And so my biggest message is that your voice matters, your life matters, and your freedom matters. I want to be able for to help people rewrite the stories of their lives. Like I'm going to start crying because it makes me emotional. Um, because the people with mental illness, there's so much stigma and they don't share their stories because they don't feel like they have a voice. And I would love my company to be like that place where they feel safe, which is why I called it your refuge, to safe, to come and to feel safe to come and share their story. And so I do that with um, my mental health support group, um, which is like journaling and a mental health support. So we do live sessions once a week, only once right now. And we get together and we talk about our challenges. We talk about our experiences. Um, and starting in February, we're really going to be diving into a lot of journaling. Um, creativity is a big, huge part of it. Um, creativity heals. So um, once you tap into your creative person and realize like, oh my gosh, like it's endless. It doesn't end. Then you just kind of know like, whoa, that means there's all kinds of possibilities for me. So that's the group. Um, the journals is just a tool and it's a place to share, write your thoughts and your dreams and, you know, make your journal however you want. Um, me personally, I do use habit trackers <laughs> because I need to, because that's what I need for me in my life. Um, and then I also have like my blog, my website where I provide, I provide information um, that's mental health journaling related. Um, and my goal is at some point that people will also feel comfortable sharing their stories with me and that I can share their stories of hope on my website. Um, so that's part of the whole, your voice. And then, of course, through doing all of that to be able to find your freedom and rebuild your life. So it's all important. So, super. I'm so looking forward to this February thing that you mentioned just now. A lot of creativity is waiting for us in store, like you said. Uh, yeah. So uh, for the rest of 2022, we've just started. The new year have already gone by. What is in store for uh, this rest of the year for you, from your side? Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, my plan and my hope is that our group will grow, um, and that people will know me as like, oh yeah, like I can share my story with her. I, I do have something that is coming up, um, and I guess I'll just share it here. <laughs> You'll be the first person I'm really publicly sharing this with. But I have a podcast that is going to be coming that I'm working with um, uh, somebody from my church with. And this year's um, podcast is going to be all about matters of the heart. So, yeah. And it will be called uh, Journeys of Hope. So that this is year, a this new year is 2022 is about hope is ahead. You know how uh, yes. the neurologist would tell you. So hope is ahead, and yeah, what a suitable uh, idea that you have for this year. So I wish you a lot of luck for all your future endeavors, and lots of love from India to you and all your endeavors that you do to your group the journey that you're carrying and to a lot of people that you're associated with a lot and lot of love and more power to your thoughts and to all your work that you're doing so oh well thank you so so much i'm so honored that you asked me to come and i just hope that 
something that I said opened somebody's eyes and gave them hope today. Like, I hope. That's my hope. For Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right.